do things that you're not used to in like little, little ways. Cause you got to practice with small steps. So it's like less scary because we're not used to being uncomfortable and not knowing things. Welcome everybody. Today, I'm very excited to have Lauren Yi with us. She is a cultivator of curiosity, helps people open the way they think, open their minds, and really just excited to have her here and help you hopefully expand what's possible in your business and your life. Thanks so much for joining us today, Lauren. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here, ready to chat. Awesome. So Lauren is a natural cultivator of community and a process-driven problem solver who has been managing people, projects, and clients since 2005. She's a lover of puzzles, pizza, and adulting like a kid. We'll have to talk about that. And she believes that curiosity, consistency, and connections are the greatest drivers of great things. I agree definitely with that statement. Um, question for you. Just go. Let's go right into it. Why are people so afraid of curiosity as we get older? We're, we're told to do it as we're kids, and then at some point it shifts. What's so scary about that for people? I mean, I think it's exactly what you just said. Like, we are kind of told to do it as kids, right? Be curious, be creative, use your imagination, um, go play on the playground, like, find new friends. And then I'm going to go with, you know, once you go from elementary, primary school to um, secondary middle, high school, and beyond, um, the world gets very real or starts to become more real in the sense of there are actual grades that potentially affect your future. Um, there are right and wrong answers to tests where it's like, yeah, you did spelling as a kid, but like you're learning. And so it's, it's not like you failed the spelling test when you're six. Like it doesn't feel like that, but you can fail tests once you're 12, 13, 14, 18, in universities and colleges. And I don't know exactly why that is the deciding factor of like, you're old enough to fail at things now in a bad way. Um, but I think that we get practiced in it because of the structures that we're in, whether it's with um, school or family. Um, because, you know, your family and friends want the best for you, too. So they're like, why are you doing this? You should be focusing. You should whatever. And so we get practiced into recentering, which is not necessarily bad. But we also, like, in the in the midst of all that, um, there's, I feel like there's less focus on learning, creativity, growth, failure being okay because it's part of learning. Um, everything gets scarier or has more repercussions. Um, and we we get taught that. <laughs> and um, some people are able to sort of hold on to bits and pieces of that feeling of kid curiosity. Um, and there's different ways to hold on to that too, right? As just like as a curious learning person versus curious in what you're interested in versus in your career like you could be curious in lots of ways and i think that some people find versions of holding on to that but it gets practiced out of us yeah there's i remember i forget the name her name right now i think it was linda laroche i'm forgetting the name but she talked about she's a speaker i heard gosh maybe even 20 years ago and she's a very funny speaker uh, keynote speaker type motivational speaker and she talked about seriousness Mm -hmm. And basically it being like a disease of people being so serious about stuff and things having to be so, like you said, accurate or right or everything's on the line almost to the level of fight or flight, which it's not. I mean, if you yeah. get a question wrong on a test, it might feel like it's the end of the world, yeah. but we know you're not going to die. And so, you know, at least biologically speaking, there is fact to say, no, that that's perhaps whatever word we want to call it, an overreaction, a reaction that's not, you know, proportional to mm -hmm. the nature of the threat. So to somebody who says, well, curiosity, I don't know, is that somebody who's just like nosy or what, what is it that, how would you define curiosity to, to people and why is it so important as we get older, personally and professionally? So I feel like when most people think about curiosity, you think about questions right because it's the who what when where why and like the age when all the like two and three year olds are asking you everything all the time and you're like stop asking questions that's the beginning <laughs> um but 
for me, curiosity are, are those questions, but it's kind of not exactly what's the point of the questions, but a little bit. Like for me as an adult, it's about understanding or learning or growth, which I think are important things. Otherwise you're just kind of there, which is fine for moments. But um, th- the world evolves and kind of so do we, we need to do that too. So I think being curious for your own individual growth as well as around you um, is important. But it's also about wonder. That's kind of like where um, like the the creative imagination curiosity can come in that you like had as a kid. Um, and as an adult, the way that that kind of looks like something in the real world is, you know, things evolve. Like we are we need to innovate. We need to like create new technologies or um, ways to deal with certain processes because of the way things are changing in the world. And if you don't wonder, you won't find out something new. (laughs) Um, And so it's, it's kind of this, this tool, I'm going to go with tool. It's kind of a tool that is important to just our existence, but has gotten kind of been like, no, you don't need that. Here's the right answer. Here's the wrong answer. Don't do that anymore. Um, And we, it, it, it becomes a sh- like shame thing when you are wrong or when you do fail, like you're a failure, failure, not you fail that thing. Like you are a failure when you make a mistake, like, and that feels bad. <laughs> like whether it's like, we are not dying, but it's, it, we, we, our worlds are our world to some extent. And so it feels like, I'm being attacked. It's very myopic of the tunnel vision of what's going on. And we, most people want to do a good job and want to grow and want to learn. But when we're told something is bad or you're bad or you did a bad job, we're like, nope, don't want to do that anymore. And then we don't. And then we lose it. (laughs) Yeah. It's so interesting to me when you consider, for example, in work, the idea of the sort of catch 22, I think about when we were in Peru, my wife's from Peru and we lived in Peru at different times. And I remember my frustration of being at a restaurant and this happened multiple times where, for example, in one restaurant, um, I said, could I have a Sunday?" And their Sunday was ice cream. And then the strawberry, like the compote, the mixed stuff. <laughs> and then chocolate or something, I forget. And then a different dish had strawberries. I said, well, can I have just ice cream, strawberries, and the fudge? I wasn't trying to be difficult. I wasn't trying to be that guy. I was just like, don't like the compote stuff. Happy to pay for it. Happy to pay more for it. No no problem. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of resistance. And what I realized after, after running into this situation a few times, that what happened is it wasn't that the waiter or the waitress couldn't understand what I was doing. They had been told that this is how you do things at the, at the restaurant. This is how it's going to be. And so it was a stressful situation for them that I first perceived as, is this person really not understanding what I'm telling them? Because they would say, no, we can't do that. And, and I, as an American, gosh, I, I, so I'm born in Canada. My parents from Trinidad and Tobago. I have a, I think somewhat of a early perspective, but I just felt like such the stereotypical, like jackass American, like, are you friggin' kidding me? You can't take it's ice cream and put not that hard. And, but but that wasn't again. So for a while, I'm like, yeah. you because they would say it's not possible. And as an American, I'm like, of course it is. How dare you tell me it's not possible? You can't tell me. And what they were really saying is, no, you don't understand, dude. It's not possible for me. My boss is gonna fire my tail. So you might be a nice guy, dude. I'm not. I'm not gonna get in an argument with him. Over yeah. your dislike of strawberry compote, really don't care. Yeah. And so it was like the creativity had been really almost, I guess, yelled out of them or whatever it was. And then mm-hmm. yet somewhere that same person, I'm sure the boss would have said, well, well, why didn't you, you know, fix that thing that I didn't, well, you didn't tell me to fix that thing. So now mm-hmm. I like literally it, it now, now then you tie it in, you say, okay, so now it's my job. It's my livelihood. And now all of a sudden, something that seems so minor for that person is fight or flight level stress. 
Yeah. And and again, when I once I realized that I I well, of course felt like like a jackass, uh, but also realized you know okay, wow, how do I how do I help this person do that? So then I would you know politely ask the manager or whatnot to and say, oh, so and so is doing a great job. Can, can, is this mm-hmm. possible? And then they, no, it's possible. I'm like, okay, 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 we're gonna do that again. You're not the manager, okay? Because I know the store owner doesn't mind if there's strawberries on top of ice cream, on top of you know, it's gonna be okay. How does a person? And this is, I guess, a two-part question. How does the, let's say, actually, let's start at home. How does the parent do a better job? You mentioned the two-year-old, and that's so typical of the point where the parents, you know, we start out, we're like, yay, Susie or Johnny's asking questions. And after a while, you start losing your mind like, oh, my God, just, just because, please, please make it stop. How can a parent not lose their mind? (laughs) <laughs> and still encourage that level of curiosity to where the person wants to continue asking and has that ability to just enjoy that and be excited for that. That's a really great question and actually a really interesting um, like juxtaposition of like fresh child curiosity, wonder, all those things and like the grown up like we've been practiced. Um one thing that I'd want to point out with that in that situation, being a parent or adult and everyone has their different levels, but I think that um, two things with adults or what generally adults where we ended up. Um, one, we, not just we we get told the right, that there are right answers, but I think that at a certain point we just quote unquote, understand that we're supposed to have the answers. Like we're old enough. You should know better. Um, Like you've been at this job for X, Y, Z years, whatever. You should know all of the answers because you've been here forever. But that is not reality and real. And that's who does know all the answers? Nobody. So there, there's this weird feeling that you're supposed to know the answers. And when we don't, even though of course we don't, we're uncomfortable. And it's that discomfort that like forces us back to comfort and safety and uh, where can I know or let me, I am a authority or a expert in whatever realm we're talking about. So there's that sort of I'm supposed to know everything and I'm uncomfortable when I don't know, but of course I don't know everything. There's that just issue. Um, I think that a great way to practice, which might also feel uncomfortable is getting comfortable with being uncomfortable a little bit or a little bit, get uncomfortable with discomfort or get comfortable with discomfort because your kid specifically, doesn't know that you don't know everything. And I don't think they're expecting you to either, but we're putting that upon ourselves. So when they are our questions, if you do know answers, you can try to answer to the best of ability. Like, why does the light turn on when I turn on the switch? Like, okay, well, there's this thing called electricity and it, um, it like flows from this switch and it goes into this light bulb and then it gives us light. Like, well, how does that work? And you're like, um, well, there's like wires and stuff and um, something with polarity. And then you're like, I don't know. I don't know the answers. And we panic. I'm like, stop asking questions. I don't know because we're uncomfortable. But you can all say, I'm not sure because that also tells them that it's okay to not know. And then you're like, let's find out together. And you can, f- and you can both learn. You can both be a little bit uncomfortable not knowing um, and that it's okay to ask questions and that it's okay to not know the answers and that it's okay to keep learning because I'm an adult and I know a lot of things, but I don't know everything. And you should not just expect every adult to know everything or know the best way. Um, And I think that that's very, in a general sense, a really important thing that I want everybody to know and remember. I think that's so huge. Um, I just think about it and just, again, whether it's, well, even work situations, or I'll just say adult situations of, well, you know, the map's not working. Why didn't you figure out how to do the map? Or 
just just things where again we have this pressure on ourselves that mm -hmm. we're supposed to know the answer mm -hmm. i know for entrepreneurs that's probably in a lot of ways expecting that it, it's almost the kiss of death because mm -hmm. if you decide that okay i'm going to i'm going to i'm going to do this solo and maybe that's the case in a lot of things because we are social animals and i think there's this you know there's this concept i, I heard once of that you know there's dependence independence and interdependence so dependence is let's say your child you know independent stage or at least the believing to be independent stage is that you know it starts with the teenager that says well i don't need anybody um and then eventually you know the person says okay great i'm out on my own and at some point hopefully there's a recognition that okay i don't need any one particular individual because that can be not so healthy but i need people and in fact, if I were to really take it to the nth degree to say, well, without other people, just me by myself, now you're almost like, okay, survive in nature. Yes, you can do it. But A, is it even desirable? And then in regular society, well, no, you really can't. You can't even get your bread per se because somebody else made the bread. Like if you really want to take it to that degree mm -hmm. and there's this sense again of this pressure for us to perform and... I guess with the curiosity, it almost makes curiosity feel foolish because it's like curiosity feels like, oh, well, I'm just sitting around it as if I'm just stoned pondering the universe as opposed to actually, you know, like, dude, what if, you know, and, and of course, maybe there's that too, but just this general, general sense of, well, how could I do this? How could my life be better? How is it possible that I could perhaps have work balance? How could I perhaps make a lot of money, provide for my family and be, and be present with my kids if I can't even entertain that question mm -hmm. well so much is just shut down yeah. instantaneously how do we get people let's say who've maybe been told you're stupid you're this you're that that was a bad idea you're just really not that smart how can people start to cultivate that if let's say you know as an adult listing they're realizing yeah you know what without gaining the whole blame and who did this just from here forward what can a person like that do to say okay going forward I'm going to open up my possibility to at least questioning things, and I'm and I'm feeling a little insecure because if I, you know, if I say it to the wrong person, I'm, I'm certainly not certainly not going to say it maybe to my trigger people who make me feel like an idiot when I ask a question. Yeah. But maybe I'll have some friends I can go to. How can a person start opening that up if they realize, yeah, this is this is a limitation for me? It can be tough, like you said, because it is, you know, potentially your livelihood or. Um, psychological safety or like mental state but at the same time I'm like if you're in that situation like remove yourself from that situation because I and if you're a hugger I'll hug you but like just be in a better community of people um, because support is important in a general sense um, so that ugh, I like hate that for people um, I feel like we all have had either a quote unquote friend or a work environment where we've had that and you're just like, oh God, that was the worst. Like I stayed there too long. I kept connection with them too long. Um, it's okay to evolve and change your situations. It's scary, but it's probably worth it if it's something that is not helping you or benefiting you. So just that part. Um, in terms of how can you cultivate that for yourself? I think, again, it's it's a practice and it's hard and it's going to feel weird and uncomfortable. Um, but some of it is literally like taking a breath because we when we are in stressful situations, especially, again, discomfort or being like defense attacked, um, our habits and brain pathways, it goes to like what we're used to which is how you've been responding this whole time. So it's just like, I am, you are telling me these things and I believe it and I feel bad and we're just going to repeat these patterns. <clears throat> so taking a moment, which I know is hard and just like, especially in the moment, just like take one breath and you can decide to remove yourself from a situation or ask a question don't we because I feel like a lot of times in certain situations like without a hard example but like it, in a certain situation if somebody is making a statement or a comment at me or to me um the initial 
inclination is to respond, which is, yes, that's how conversations work, but it doesn't have to be like a you're right response. It can be a question for better understanding because there is a likelihood that you've made assumptions on what they're talking about. Oftentimes, they're, it's correct and you're on the same page, but not always. Um, there's an example, I can think of an example that actually I just heard from a friend where they were conversing with a client um, and this client they hadn't talked to in a really long time. And they were checking in about if they wanted to get some new product that was happening for seasonal changes or whatever. And this client who they haven't spoken to in a long time goes, like, I need this in like, I have this event and like, I need you to come out today or like in the morning tomorrow. And being someone with a schedule, so like, oh, I can't actually do that. Like the earliest I can come out is in like, uh, maybe at the end of the week, I understand you have the event, but I can like, well, you know, like I can take my business somewhere else. and like, don't take this as a threat, but like, I don't need this. And you're like, and she responded with, okay. <laughs> and they were like taken aback by that. Um, where they're like, this is, this is, this didn't work how it usually works for me. Um, and they're like, well, what do you mean? Like, I need you to do this. They're like, well, I told you I can't fit it in my, I literally don't have time until later. And you also, I don't respond well to threats. <laughs> and they went, well, I was, I, like I said, I like, it wasn't a threat. Like, well, how, how they took a second and they asked a question of like, how could I perceive that as not a threat when you literally told me, if not this, then I will do this other thing that is going to be negative for you. And they like, could, that person, that client, like could not respond because you're trying to get down to like the very bottom of what's happening and understanding. It's not about fault. It's not about like, well, you threatened me. It's like, yeah. But like, well, if it wasn't a threat, like, what was it? Like, what are you trying to communicate? I'm trying to communicate. I'd love to work with you, but I literally cannot for a few days. And I understand that you're in a tight spot, but I cannot help you in this instance. Um, so trying to find ways to just ask for clarification, even if it's not like a specific who, what, when, where, but it could just be like, what do you mean by that? Like if someone is in a name calling situation doesn't feel great, but you're like, okay, what makes you say that? What did I do that makes you feel that way? Because I want to understand, because I want to fix it. <laughs> and also explain yourself, sir or ma'am, like what, why are you attacking me? <laughs> um, so it could be as simple as kind of reframing it as a question back to them, like why? Yeah, I think that's one of the things and you can correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I think so much of it is the intention of your energy behind it. Because you can say, you know, you can come with a certain tone or a certain energy. And just, again, just even who you are. People, it never ceases to amaze me how people will think they're doing something clever. But if you ask them, can they spot, when other people are trying to do something clever, they're like, oh yeah, I can see that easily. I'm like, well, so is everybody else a moron? Like, you're the only one that sees this. You can, you know, and then they're like, oh, I mean, you saw that? Like, yes, we saw that. And it's <laughs> kind of disturbing, but sure. A lot of the times when people look at curiosity, there is, well, first there's a sense that it can be unproductive. Like, again, it's just daydreaming. It, it's 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 not, not goal-oriented. But on another sense, it can almost feel unproductive if a person is, let's say, keeps replaying something in their mind that happened. And they say, well, gosh, you know, what if I had done it that way? What if it had done that way? How is that either similar to or different from curiosity that let's say is helpful and in some way, not to put a value judgment on it, because sometimes we do need to look back and say, oh, mm -hmm. this happened. What do I learn from this and hopefully take forward? I'm not going to just pretend it never happened. Mm -hmm. But there can be a point where that curiosity can almost become, what do you want to call it, addictive or just not, not really helping Mm -hmm. How would you help a person make the distinction between those? And then how can a person perhaps even move on from that going forward? If there is something that happened to say, gosh, I wish I'd have done that. What if I'd have done that? But I'm kind of stuck there. Um, so I'm going to reference this, uh, the thing that you kind of mentioned in the beginning, um, what I often say and 
truly believe in that uh, I want to encourage more people to adult like a kid. And what that means for me in a general sense, but in there's a lot of categories of that is like own play and curiosity and empathy and all these things and how we were as a kid or how we interact with kids. Um, one of the big ways that I that that takes shape is play and curiosity because both of those things uh, when you're a kid and again I'm thinking like nine or ten ish and under um before we're told (laughs) to like everything's right and wrong and black and white um there's a level of play that you have again with sports or board games or imaginary imagination games um that is about you're so present in them it's not like yes of course you want to win the basketball game but you're playing each play as it's happening and the game is still happening so you can't worry about what happened i mean you might you might at a certain point but like oftentimes kids are not worrying about what happened last quarter because they're in this quarter maybe that happens in high school and college when it gets way more serious um but you're present um similarly Curiosity, I think curiosity and creativity and imagination, those kind of go hand in hand oftentimes. And if you are playing an imaginary playground game, like we're princes and knights and princesses and like there's a dragon and whatever on the playground and then everything is forward moving, even if it's like, oh, we like well, we had a fight with this kingdom and now we have to go over there. It's not like, well, last time we went over there, a problem happened. It's just like, nope, now we're going over there. And it's all forward thinking. Not to say, you know, as an adult, we have experience, but not to discount past experience because we learn from that, but not hinder, letting it hinder you to some extent. I feel like play and curiosity and like a growth childlike mindset is about using the resources you have and knowledge that you have, but to move forward. And so like the thing that you said about, what if I did that? Yeah, that's a good thing to an extent. Um, because you're like, well, this this situation did not work out how I had hoped. Ugh, how could I have done this differently? That feels different than even like even that general, how could I have done this differently is different than the Ugh, what if I did this? What if they said that? What if I didn't show up in this outfit? Like it could be, it could be so many things and you cannot change the past. It's not about fault. It's about understanding and process to move forward for the better for next time. Um, you can be curious about situations and imagine possibilities because that's what it curiosity can can and should be about. But if it's about possibilities, the forward thinking is what helps you. The past, you cannot change. You can use it to inform moving forward. But if you get stuck in that sort of tornado of past what if, and I should have, the shoulds and the ifs and could, would, all those, um, if they're not helping you move forward, it's just like rumination, which is like, curiosity gone too far in in what you can't change um and i think that that's a really important distinction because again don't not question things that happened but use it use it use the powers for good (laughs) yeah absolutely i I think one of the things you said in our pre-interview was so relevant is you said your choice is less important than what you do when you get the feedback from your you know the results of your choice yeah Um, I, I still agree with that (laughs) because there's kind of like the, the black and white answer thing, right? We're told there's one way to do things. We're always looking for like those articles where it's just like the, the best, the top five ways to whatever. And like, Oh, it's going to tell me the answer. It will tell you some things, but there's still a bunch of other ways to do something. And I think that because we're so practiced at like wanting to know the right answer or the easiest way or the best way, we don't always wonder or consider any other option. But if you are interested in enough or curious enough or um, have an idea, 
that sticks in there long enough. Like it's not just a fleeting thing. You're like, what if I changed my business to include consulting? And you're like, okay. And you're just like, okay, well, maybe I can't do that. Like that, I'm trying to focus, but then it like keeps floating around. <laughs> That's happening for some reason. Um, and you can make a choice in the best way possible. Very little things are, very few things are permanent. Um, it feels like they are. And there are maybe ways where like, oh, it'd be easier if I didn't do it, <laughs> but that's not what it's about. And so you can make a choice and it's like, it's like a choose your own adventure, adventure book, right? That's literally what life is. We're choosing and making choices and we have new pathways because of that. Um, that doesn't mean that at some point you don't end up back at a different page in like a loop of the book, um, but you can make a choice and then you have a new set of options. One of the options could be, one of the options could be, I'm, that was not the choice. I'm going to go back to where I was and that's okay and possible because you're curious. It's not necessarily a passion project, but you can make a choice and then you have new options and you can take action on those. And so I think we often get time stuck in the choice and the curious before it's a thing thing. <laughs> um and then it's it's kind of like a it's there's useful create creativity and curiosity and imagination and then there's versions where it gets unhelpful where you're just wasting imagination on negative terrible things which everybody does the terrible thing i don't know why this became the norm but like the negative feelings of positive intent is confusing to me like when you're trying, wanting to try something new, like, oh, like, even if it's just like, oh, should I try, should I go on this weekend trip with this friend? A different friend might say, yeah, what's the worst that could happen? And we immediately go to the terrible things. <laughs> but it might not be terrible. Like, it could be really awesome. Like, oh, you haven't seen them in years. You're going to catch up. So you're going to have so much to catch up on. Like, remember that one time? It doesn't have to be the terrible, but we are, for whatever reason, very practiced in the negative, I mean, it's like a survival tactic, right? Like protect yourself. Yeah, you had said, I remember, I, I love this. I just highlighted, you know, what if you make an awesome decision? Yeah, what if? Let's try, do the thing. Then you can decide if what to do after that. <laughs> so how can then people, you know, you know we've, we've said a couple times, this idea of being comfortable mm -hmm. with uncertainty, which to a lot of people sounds scary. Uh, to some people, they might say, well, you know, Lauren, things have worked out for you, or you're now in this position of wherever you're at, that they would say that is above where they're at, and by, by whatever measure they might use and say, so you're successful, you're this, you're that. So it's easy for you to make that decision, but you don't understand, see, I'm in this situation where things aren't the way I'd like them to be. How can that curiosity be a path as opposed to just something that, you know, the person who theoretically you know, is allowed to do it now because they're successful. Whereas what I'm hearing you say, and, the, and definitely my experience has been that the curiosity is a huge part of how I got successful. Not, you know, not just a, a nice side effect that I get to do now that I get to dabble with certain things I'm curious about, like have a podcast. Uh, but that same spirit is part of where I am, why I am where I am. It is a, it is a practice, which I think I've said so everything in life is a practice. Um, it's going to feel weird until you get better at it. And there are multiple ways that you can practice without it being, it can be like a career situation, but it doesn't have to be that. Again, if you're like, that sounds scary. I can't just quit my job and like, I don't have money to like float in between while I try this thing. Practice smaller. Um, you can be curious and uncomfortable with trying new things. Like one of the, one of the tough questions sometimes, not scare, too scary, but like when was the last time you did something for the very first time? It could be big or small. Like, okay, when was the last time you tried a new restaurant? When was the last time you like learned a new skill? When was the last time you talked to somebody that you didn't know? Um, that like wasn't a mutual friend because um, those things could be like potentially networking, learning new skills, um, potentially uh, just, you know, getting out of your comfort zone 
Um, and you could do it in very little ways too. Like again, like the restaurant thing, like usually if you have your go-to favorite restaurants and you're like, I love this dish, or I know that I trust the chef specials. Uh, I know we have a favorite table, <laughs> like whatever that might be. Um, but if you try something new, like you've never seen the menu before, like what is this environment ambiance? Um, how How is the service here? Um, you don't really know if it's going to be like easy or hard to get a check. Um, it's all a new experience, but in a relatively safe, normal, mundane way. But it is getting out of your norm a little bit. Um, and again, there's lots of little and medium and big ways to do that. And I would encourage you to try. And if, even if it's something like somebody you're talking to, like a friend says something that they did recently, like they found, they went, like went to a concert or read a new book. And if you've never heard of that author or that band or that thing, say like, tell me more about that. Or like, I like, would you recommend me reading that? Or like, are there songs you recommend? Cause it's something that you don't know and it's okay to not like things. And it's okay to decide that that's not your favorite band moving forward, but like you're learning something and you don't know what to expect and that's okay and good. So do things that you're not used to in like little, little ways. Cause you got to practice with small steps. So it's like less scary because we're not used to being uncomfortable and not knowing things. Yeah. I think there's definitely wisdom in that. I mean, you don't want to go and try something that's really huge that could have bad consequences and find out, oh, my fear was right. I shouldn't do blah, 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 or I shouldn't, you know, do something of that nature or whatever the risk is. If it's a big deal, one of the things you just mentioned there, which I think is so huge, and I'm still learning as a father, uh, with 15 year old and 12 year old children that sometimes, especially in relationships, the best answer is tell me more about that. And mm -hmm. not from a sense of tell me more about that because, <laughs> Oh geez, I got to listen or not like, you know, you know, tell tell me more about that. You know, while mm -hmm. I'm, while I'm doing here and I'm tell me more about which feels, but literally like, tell me more about that because I want to know what your world is like because, and even as a parent, gosh, I want to know if there's stuff going on in your life that I need to know about that maybe is not safe, that yeah. I want to understand your world. Like there's so many different positive uh, side effects to it of just, just if nothing more than the child or, or a friend, it doesn't have to be a child, it could be a friend, it could be anybody, mm -hmm. be feeling completely heard. Yeah. And then after that, if you say, okay, I've now listened to the entire album of what your generation calls music by this artist who's, <laughs> I'll just say, rapping lyrical skills are repetitive and sounds like a nursery rhyme, and we had much better rap in our day. I like joke with my son about this. Uh -huh. And I know there are good rappers today, just some of the ones he listens to, I give him grapes. I'm like, dude, they're allowed to use more than five words in a song, just so you know. Um, but then I can say, okay, I've now listened to the entire album. I didn't prejudge. I've now listened. I was curious. And you know what? I'm going to actually stick with my first thought. I'm good if I never hear that song again. That'll be okay. You you go ahead. Yeah. Uh, but and, and of course, you can be playful with it and have fun with it. But at least the person realizes, okay, you value me enough. In fact, that's something you really didn't think you wanted to do, you you know dabbled into. And of course, I've also found music by, that my daughter, my son listens to that I was kind of like, eh, I listened to I'm like, wow, that's really good. Mm -hmm. And then of course they get this sense of pride that yes. And then like my son's like, like I didn't know who, and I didn't have a, a judgment on one way or another. I didn't know him, like the rapper Juice World, um, unfortunately passed away about, I think it was a little over a year ago. Um, but freestyle rapper, awesome. A lot of the things he does talent wise is considered by many, one of the best freestyle rappers of all time. Mm -hmm. And my son's like, oh yeah, he's a fan of the police and Blink-182. And he's like, and he knows those are two of my favorite bands of all time. And so it was this connection point where if I wasn't, and I really was generally curious because it, again, it was a combination of, okay, what are you listening to? Mm -hmm. It's a little bit of, okay, I've listened to some rap music and some of the lyrics can be not the greatest or the most True. socially constructive. So curious what you're listening to, son. But it really was that sense of, cause for a while I was just, and he was like, you're, you're being a boomer. And I'm in Gen X and I'm like, okay, so now we're, now we're drawing lines. He's like, he's like, no, you're already telling me that you don't like it. You haven't even, I'm like, you're right. I'm, 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 I'm doing that 
old person thing that old people do when they're just like, yeah, well, it's easier for me because, you know, I can, I can find reasons why it's not better. But when I got genuinely curious and listened, it's become something that's been a connection point for us. And again, and I still don't listen to all the songs my son listens to. And I still think a lot of our music and certain things I prefer, but I have a different appreciation. How can a person realize perhaps when maybe they're not being curious enough or just simply not listening enough because we all we all think we're nice we all think we have a good sense of humor none of us think we're idiots but there's the whole joke about you know being an idiot or being dumb is you know it's like you know it's like being dead it's painful to everybody except the person who you know has the <laughs> has the the affliction how can a person maybe realize you know, like what are the signs that somebody's giving me other than the obvious like okay you're not listening how can a person maybe, if they're listening, say, wow, maybe I'm not connecting enough. What would what would a person be able to see to say, okay, I'm not listening enough? Okay. There's different situations, right? Where you are in, like if you're in a one-on-one or small group conversation, sometimes it's for work and you can't not be there. And sometimes it's for fun and you have a little bit of choice. Um, I think that the, one of the important things that I want to touch on that you remind me that I was like, I don't think I've said this here. Um, Both play and curiosity require your presence, engagement, and interest. You can't be curious if you're not actually interested. Like that's not, that's not real curiosity. Like if I could ask you a question, like, you know, it's like, yeah, like tell me more about that thing. Like I'm not really, I don't really care. Like that's the message that's coming if you're distracted and asking questions. But if you're actually interested you're like, oh my gosh, like, what do you mean? What, like, tell, you were there? What's that, like, what was that like? Where was that person? Who, who connected you to that thing? And you're actually focused because you're interested. So I know that it's harder to find that in some situations where we are required to be there, but trying to focus on what you, like, kind of what you can control in that, right? So like, okay, this meeting for work, doesn't feel relevant to me, but I'm supposed to be here because I'm part of this department that's peripherally (laughs) involved. So, okay, I mostly don't care, but I'm trying to care because I'm here. So maybe it's the, okay, what can I glean from this? What am I interested in to help me better with my job? Because in specifically a lot of work environments, there's oftentimes siloing where we're all trying to do the same thing, but we're kind of doing it separately and we don't always come together enough times um, in the process. And I think that if you are in a meeting where you think it's not relevant to you, but someone has required or asked you to be there, one of two things can happen. One, you actually don't need to be there, which you can ask the question after the meeting, like, hey, I think that my time might be better spent doing this thing. Like I, maybe I just didn't understand why I'm here. The questions, let me be curious, like, and understand, maybe you don't need to be there, but Maybe you are supposed to be there for a reason. They chose to invite you. They thought you needed to be present. So, okay, why am I here? Like, what can I gain from hearing this conversation in my understanding for my job or things that I need to do? Or maybe they're saying something that I can chime in and be like, that doesn't match up with what I was told or deadlines. So trying to figure out where your interest can be, either where it naturally is or where you can sort of like, like rake and gather the information that is relevant to you. Like, okay, I read this book and I hated it for a book club, but what can I gain from it? Cause I spent time in it. I'm here. Um, those are really, those are really important ways that you can sort of lean into your own curiosity for um, engagement and understanding and those things. Um, and sometimes when it is the casual, not work, personal versions of, interactions with people, it can be, you made a really good point with, um, you know, I had said like, oh yeah, next time someone's talking about something that you don't know, again, you have to actually be interested. So if it's like a plot line that you don't care about or a genre of book you don't care about, but if it, it does interest you and specifically it could be about the person. So if it's your son or daughter or kid, um, and you want to know more about their life in general, like that's enough interest sometimes. But if it is like a band <clears throat> that you haven't heard of and you hear on the radio or something and like, oh, I love this. I've been to 12 shows. Like, okay, 
I like this song. What else can you tell me? Um, Because it needs to be real and it needs to be authentic. And sometimes we don't know what we don't know because we're practiced out of it, I think. And so the, the kid part of me wants it to be wants you to listen more to yourself also because sometimes we don't understand when we're interested I think because we're practiced out of it so sometimes you're just like you hear something and you kind of like you're you like st- it stops you in your tracks and you don't necessarily know why and you don't really know what to ask more but you're like what did you say um who are you talking about like did I hear that that band name right did I hear that play correctly like what was the plot line and that's like the kid in you being like hey hey find out some more about that (laughs) like pay attention I'm interested are you listening to me um so sometimes we don't have a question yet or we don't fully recognize it because it's something that's like outside of our realm but when when something's like antennas up and like stops you enough to turn and like refocus for a second lean into that a little bit like you could be like oh no that's not what I thought but like lean into for a second because it's it's the practice of like listening to yourself again um I think that that's that's a really great way to do that um but yeah (laughs) yeah so what's and thank you this is all I think there's so much to this of, you know, humility, being a student, learning, being open, chance to discover new things. How would you summarize to somebody, what is the opportunity cost of not turning on your curiosity or engaging with it? And what's the natural reward or benefit of doing that? of engaging it and, you know, the the flip side, you know, here's, here's the, if you don't do it, here's kind of what kind of happens. And if you do engage, what happens? If you can be curious, it, it does open up possibilities because of the things that you had just said, Um, because you're open to ideas, um, perspectives, uh, not knowing something, um, the possibility of a little bit of risk or failure, which failure doesn't have to be bad. It's just, something didn't work, but you're willing to try because it sounds like a good idea. Um, So if you can be curious enough to get to the point of trying things, it's about learning and understanding and betterment and moving forward and progress. And if you aren't doing that and you're saying like what that tends to communicate is I'm the best (laughs) or right. I know, I know what's right okay, then why do you have anybody else around you? Like, if you're just like, this is the way. Um, it, what tends, what I feel like tends to happen is a, a, there's that stagnant non-growth space, which from a like historical business perspective, there was um, like the Netflix versus Blockbuster, right? Um, Blockbuster, for those who don't know, um, was a VHS and some DVD rental store um, back in the day. And I think Netflix, actually, they started their sort of like DVD mailing opportunity. They like didn't really have streaming as much then, but they went to Blockbuster, I think, to like see like you want to like buy into this or, you know, invest. And they're like, no. No. And Blockbuster was like, we know the best way. This is what works. It's been working forever. This is this is what we're going to do. We don't need this new weird whatever you're doing. Why are you mailing stuff and like whatever this streaming thing is? Like there's TV and people rent stuff. And they were not open to other perspectives, possibilities, um, new things. And Blockbuster's basically gone. And Netflix is huge. <laughs> and not everything's going to be like that. But it's... Um, You don't know what you don't know. And also, you don't know everything. (laughs) You can't. Yeah, there's a uh, there's a show, it's just finishing its second season, uh, called Ted Lasso. I just started watching it. Okay. Well, there's I I I don't want to spoil it for you. There is a scene in the in one of the episodes where the main character, Ted Lasso, he just talks about the difference between people who are curious. 
and people who are I forget the word he uses, but it's basically like judgmental or who think they know everything. Mm-hmm. And you'll you'll really appreciate the scene. For those of y'all who've seen it, if not, look up look up Curiosity Ted Lasso. I think it'll it'll show up. I can't tell you more than that because then it'll mess it up. Uh, <laughs> but it's a really interesting thing because his character is an interesting character, and a lot of people prejudge him. And so he he gets to make this point about the difference between people who are curious about why he does things that he does versus. Mm-hmm. Just like, oh, he looks like this, he talks like this, he sounds like he's not very educated or whatever it might be. So, um, so yeah. So, wow. There is, there's so much more to this yeah. and- It's a big topic. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it would, it, 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 especially if you get curious. So I've got a couple uh, sort of lightning round questions for you. Uh, and I, some of these might actually already be, uh, we might have covered them, but if you could give your entire target audience- one skill, what would that skill be? One skill? Um, the like baseline of wanting to understand instead of wanting to be right or wanting to, yeah, before wanting to be right. Wanting to understand awesome. over wanting to be right. By the way, I love the way, you know, people might or might not see this if you're listening to the audio. I love the way you truly engage every question I'm giving you and you are truly living what like you're, you know, some people are like, oh, I've got to answer. I've got to, there's a, there's a timer. And if I don't answer, they're going to turn off the interview and they're going to all just <laughs> shut off their, their devices. I love how you're just doing this modeling. You don't even have to try. This is what you do of just being, asking yourself the question, mm-hmm. being yeah. present with the question. So thank you for that. Yeah. What is the costliest business decision you've ever made? And what did you learn? The costliest business decision oh my gosh or mistake whatever word you want to call that these are good questions <laughs> well, thank you. um costliest dis- okay i'm gonna go i didn't really cover this but i will try to be brief um i don't think i i didn't lean into the curiosity thing at this point in my life. And I was in a terrible, I was in a job that was a terrible environment. Like the job in theory sounded like sound good and all that stuff. But um, the work environment and the uh, supervisor that I had was not great. And I think that believing that somebody knew best and not trusting myself, I stayed in that situation and let several things happen where like my, like, we're going to change this about your job description or change this about your pay rate or about your hours. And I just like let it happen because I thought they knew better. And I was new and I had to prove myself and I just let it happen. And I stayed at it too long thinking that it was what I was supposed to do to get where I was trying to be. And it was costly in the sense of I was at that job for I think two years, but I had people like three months in being like, it sounds like you should quit. Like, this sounds terrible. Like when I I wasn't like actively complaining, but I was just like, like, how was work? And I was like, oh, this and this. And like, I ate lunch really late. And like, I left at this time. And like, that sounds bad. But I stayed at this job for a year and a half, two years in like some different ways. And I did not do what I was not doing what I wanted or what I thought that job was going to give me. I didn't think that I knew better because this person was yelling at me that I didn't know. Um, I didn't, I wasn't doing things that were helping myself as a human or as a professional individual. Um, and it was, it was costly in a, in a like sort of bigger general sense versus like monetary a little bit. Um, but also just in like my personal well being and growth and, um, what I was allowing myself to do or not do. Gotcha. Thank you. No, that's that's huge. I appreciate the answer. That's, I think one of the things people forget is just sometimes we just need to trust trust our gut on some level. Yeah. What is the best business decision you've ever made, and how did you execute it? <sighs> okay. Related to said story that I just had, it was kind of an accident, um, but with 
I eventually quit that job multiple times. I had quit that bad job multiple times because I'm a nice person and I wanted to help train somebody. And then it just kept not happening. Um, I eventually left, but without a plan. Like I did not have another job lined up. I was like, I moved, I physically moved away so I could no longer work there. Um, and I think without being like, I'm just going to be curious. Like I was not actively thinking that, but I was just like, I'm an adult that needs to survive and I need a job and I'm going to find something that I'm capable of. But when you're also doing that, you're like looking for things that are somewhat interesting, like, you know, in one way or another, like, okay, like I can be an office manager anywhere. Like why this random company? So like, oh, they seem like they're doing cool stuff. And I stumbled into a job. I found a job and said, like, yeah, like, this was a temporary thing where I got to learn through play and teach kids STEM using Lego as, like, a summer camp instructor. I was like, this is a great temporary thing that I'm going to, like, do while I look for other jobs. And then I accidentally on purpose stayed there for almost a decade, and I, like, became, like, a coordinator and an area manager. And I like started doing team building with adults with somebody using Lego um, because I was just like, I need to do something. And I was open to things like this sounds interesting and fun. And people would always be like, are you still at that Lego job? Like it's not a real job, Uh, but it was just like, yeah, I mean, I like what we do. It's rewarding. I believe that it's helping people. I love my coworkers and like leaning into that, like it feels good and I don't have to be doing something else. Um, and I helped grow the company. I like went from like six staff in my area. Like when I became an area manager, I had like five or six staff. I ended up with two assistant area managers and like 16 staff. I grew the team building department with a colleague, which like barely existed in the beginning. Um, and we were working with people nationally. It was amazing because I was interested and curious and having a good time. And like, what if we did our program with this theme? Uh, what if we grew in this area? And like, you could try it. And then if it doesn't work, then you're done and you've learned. Um, so I got to do that in that accidental job after I left and started valuing myself. <laughs> that is awesome. All right. Just a few more. Okay, what have you that. dropped from your business or your life that's been the most liberating? Oh my goodness. What have I dropped? I do too many things. This is a very difficult question. What have I dropped? Um, worrying about the things that didn't work out. To some extent, again, like learning from it if you can, or like, oh, I wish I did this differently, or like, I'm going to do that differently next time but like you cannot change the past um also like maybe there's a really shiny client person that you want to work with but they're like the most difficult person and it's just not working out like okay it's not meant to be like it shouldn't be this hard like yes i want your business but i also this is rough so if it's not working it's okay let's find a new way to make something else work awesome what are you most excited about in your work right now um, it's so general, but it's just like always, I always helping people. Like I want people to be the, like be all of their potential. Even when I was an area manager, like my staff, I was like, I want to help you be a better instructor, but I also like want you to be a good human. Um, And one of like my proud side things was we had annual evaluations and one per there's like what do you want to be doing in a year or two years and it could be per- personal or professional and they had said they wanted to go back to school and they'd been avoiding it for a really long time because like I guess they had a situation that did not go well and they were like kind of traumatized by it and I was like okay well how can I help you do that like let's be accountability buddies like when are your when's the deadline to register what do you need to do and they're like well i have to talk to my advisor and like okay text me by the end of the week this is what you're gonna do like this fall you're gonna do one class and then they like got we went back and forth and then later they eventually came back to me and like i signed up for three classes i was like okay that's awesome and then like they continued in semesters and it's such a small accountability help you can do it thing but i was like yay possibilities for you and it's like more fulfilling for your life and you've been wanting to do this thing so like just the idea of being able to help people reach potential 
all the time at any point, whoever you are. Like I love that. And I know it's super general, but I I love that all the time everywhere. Awesome. And what are you most excited about in your life right now? Ooh. Um, what am I most excited about in my life? It what day is it? <laughs> um I will Okay, here's a real mundane one. I don't always treat myself to things because I'm just like, I'm just, I just don't buy stuff often. But I, I am working on celebrating when good things happen and not just like passing them by and being like, I did a thing versus like, we did it. What's next? So um, I had a good thing happen. And I was like, I'm going to reward myself in some way and celebrate. And I texted and told a couple people. And then I decided to buy a song book, like a music song book by a, from a band that I enjoy that has like piano, guitar, vocal stuff. Cause I've played piano and I sort of play guitar a little bit, not really. Um, but I was like, I love this band. And I feel like it'd be really fun to play their music. And it like, they just, I saw it on social media. They just made a thing. So I bought it and I got it in the mail awesome. the other day. And it's over on a keyboard right now, but I haven't opened it or done anything. So soon I will be trying to play some songs. Very cool. That is awesome. Thank Celebrate. you so much. I really just yeah. enjoyed um, all the conversation. Where can people connect with you and learn more about your work? And we will put the links in, in the show so you don't have to spell out stuff. But just in general, okay. where can people find you? Awesome. Um, I do many things. The main couple are I speak and facilitate and like want to help people and consult and do things. Um, and I can be found at cultivatorofcuriosity.com. That is me. And I also have a business with two other awesome women where we um, run workshops and be custom bespoke betterment projects to help you do better with more information and play and joy. Uh, and that is called thisusnow.com. Um, but yeah, we are both ways want to help people be the best people and places and teams with fun if you can. Awesome. Thank you so much. I know this is something that when people hear about three day week and they're like, I'm going to enjoy my weekends. I'm like, yes, but also want to enjoy the times when you're in work if you can, because why wouldn't you? So thank you yeah. so much for what you've shared. Thank you for coming out. Really appreciate your help. And I look forward to hearing from people, their feedback on our review. Thanks again so much for coming out today, Will. Of course. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. And as always, look forward to helping you impact more people and make more money in less time. Do what you do best so you can better enjoy your family, your friends, and your life. Thanks for listening.